Hi, I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. This video will be a short addendum to the previous day and night cycle shader videos because I got several requests on how to add sprite lights to this shader and I thought I might as well create a short video on that. I won't explain everything in detail, I'll just show and comment changes I added to this version and in the links below you'll find the GMS2 project file to download. Also, if you jump from the video about the day and night cycle shader version 1.1 right to this video, you missed a few important concepts. You'll at least need to know how to pass a second texture into a shader. I covered that topic in the tutorials on Luma Masks. Let me explain the basic idea first, we'll get into some more details later. So we got this mockup created from assets by Michele Bugelli. A link to his open game art profile is below the video as well. What I want to do now is add lights like this. The way we're going to do this is we'll create light objects and let the controller object draw the sprites of each instance onto a black light surface in additive blend mode. Then we'll pass the light surface into the shader and the shader will Step 1. Take the sample from the application surface where the game is on. That's the base color. Step 2. Calculate the day and night cycle color without the lights. In version 1.1 we call this out color and I'll leave it that way. Step 3. Take a sample from the light surface, the lights color. Step 4. Multiply the base color with the normalized lights color and the lights factor. Step 5. Calculate the lights color value. Step 6. Mix the out color with the light and the base color and the mix amount is the value of the lights color. So the brighter the light sample is, the more of the base color times the lights color will show and the darker the lights value is, the more of the out color will show. And the final result will look like this. So this is the project file you can download by the link below. I added several light sprites similar to this one and I added two light objects and a parent light object. And the parent object is just an invisible empty shell and the children got one of the light sprites and are set to be invisible as well. Now those actually wouldn't need any code at all if the light is static. But if you want to change the light's attributes dynamically then you can add code to them. In this one I added a very simple rotation by changing the image angle and I let the light strength pulse by changing the image alpha over time in the step event. And in this object I added some more code to add some scale pulsing and for demo reasons to change the light sprite with a toggle button on the GUI, but I'm not going through that code since that's not the topic of this video. But here I also set some variable definitions to set the maximum scaling and the speed or time until the pulsing direction changes again so we can change those for each instance individually in the room editor. And here's the controller object. It's based on the version 1.1. There's no new events in here and only the create event and the draw GUI begin event have changed a bit. We'll look into those two events in a second. In the demo room I created a new layer for the lights instances. And for each of those instances we can change attributes like the scale, the rotation and the color. And the darker the color is, the less bright the light will be. And that's one of the problems in this lighting shader. A pure red light will be quite dark. It only has a brightness of one third since the blue and the green channels are zero. So keep that in mind and don't set pure red, green or blue here. Instead you should lighten them up a bit. And of course we can also change the variables we prepared in the variable definitions of the object. And in the GUI I added a second slider and two toggle groups, one group with only one button. This will be used to show the light surface instead of the final result. And the second toggle group will change the light sprites. So let's look into the code of the controller object. On the left is version 1.1 as it was at the end of the last video on the day and night cycles. On the right is version 1.2 with the new light system. In the title and info region I just changed the info text, nothing important. In the sprite and shader region we'll only need three new variables for the light surface. As lights is the sampler index for the light surface, text lights will be the texture ID of the light surface, and surface lights will be the surface ID of the light surface. The color variables remain unchanged and the key times remain unchanged as well. And the only thing that changed in the water reflection section is the script that's called before the reflection tile layer is drawn. We had to do that when changing from version 1 to 1.1 and we need to do it here again. So instead of calling script set alpha v11 we need to call v12. And inside the script, of course, I changed v11 to v12 as well. Now the resize region will stay the same. 
and the new GUI region is for demo purposes only, I'm naming the new slider and toggle buttons. So there's not much in CreateEvent that changed. The only important changes were the sampler index, texture ID and surface ID. Now to the draw GUI begin event. I added a lot to this, but nothing complicated. First let's have a look at the part where we set the shader and draw the application surface. As you can see, there's only one new line here, the line to send the texture ID of the light surface, text lights, to the shader sampler index as lights. At the end, I added a small debug feature to draw the light surface on top of everything so we can see what the light surface looks like. Before this, we need to create the light surface and draw the lights onto the surface. This code checks if the light surface exists and if not, creates one and stores the texture ID used for the shader. In this demo, the surface is the same size as the application surface. Then we can set the surface and draw the lights onto it. Step 1. Set up the surface and GPU. We need a black surface to start with and to add lights, we need to be in blend mode add. If the lights instances in the room editor are scaled, you might want to also turn on the linear texture filter here like I did. Step 2. Draw the light sprites to the light surface. With the local variable, light strength will set the brightness of all lights at the same time. In this demo, we'll just use a slider returning a value from 0 to 1. Now, to determine where to draw, we need to consider that the surface has its own coordinate system ranging from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So we'll need to get the views room coordinates. Using the with statement, we'll tell all children of the parent light objects to draw their sprites to the surface. The objects were set to be invisible, so the instances won't draw themselves. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is so I only need to set the surface once and change the blend mode twice for all instances instead of for each instance. But there's of course other ways to do this. So we're drawing the instance's sprites with all its attributes at its xy position minus the views position, but we multiply image alpha with light strength. Since we're in blend mode add, reducing the alpha just reduces the brightness of the sprite. That's why reducing light strength will reduce the brightness of the lights. There's a few things to mention here though. If you've got many lights instances and the room larger than the view, make sure only the lights that are in view are drawn, either by checking when drawing or with some instance deactivate activate system. And if things like view, viewport, application surface or the light surface have different sizes, you maybe need to change the drawing scale. The variable light strength controls the brightness of all lights at the same time. This is where you could change how bright those lights should be depending on in-game daytime or on other factors instead of a slider like in this demo. But if you want to control the brightness of each individual light, there's two ways since both the darkness of the image blend color as well as the alpha value determine the brightness of the result. For static brightness, the easiest way is to set a darker image blend color in the room editor. And for dynamic changes, the easiest way is to change image alpha since we're multiplying that with the lights factor. Then just to show that text can also be used as light, I added this demo section here. I used draw text color to pass in the light's strength. And the last thing to do here is reset the GPU's texture filter and blend mode, and of course reset the target. So this created the light surface, and that surface will be sent to the shader as second texture right here. Now the fragment shader. In the header we need to declare the new sample 2D lights, but the rest of the header stayed the same. In the main function I changed the variable name for the sample from the application surface from outcall to base call. I still kept outcall late in the code, but will need the original call again further down. The color calculations remain the same. So up to here, base caller is the sample from the application surface and out call is the caller with the day and night effect. The overlay, the saturation, the contrast, the popping lights and brightness. Now we need to mix in the light surface, so we need its samples RGB. Next we need to determine the brightness of that sample. The anti-C vector we used a few lines above and the application surface sample won't give good results here though, so I used an even 33% weight distribution. Now we need to mix the out color with the base color multiplied with the lights color by the mix amount of gray, the value of the lights color. This will look horribly wrong yet and I'm going to show the fixes in a few steps. But for now let's just run this for the first time and see what's wrong and why. Instead of lighting the game, it darkens. Even if we increase the strength, it still darkens. 
and if we set the game's daytime to midnight we can see some areas get brighter and some get darker. But the light surface looks correct. The reason is simple. In the shader we multiply the base call with the lights call. Multiplication with less than 1 always means the result gets darker and when we mix this with the out call, the out call can actually be brighter than our base call times light call. Now my first thought was multiplying lights call by something larger than 1. This might look better at night, but it's still wrong and it's completely off at noon. So I thought, what about adding something to lights call instead of multiplying? But this doesn't help either. First of all, it looks wrong at the edges and adding just moves everything towards white. And adding less than 0.5 wouldn't solve the problem either, so we need to find another way. So I thought setting the light's vector's magnitude by normalizing could fix that problem. But normalizing can reduce the brightness as well, white becomes a gray. To compensate, I multiplied the normalized vector by 3, but you can experiment with other constants. Now at first glance this looks horrible, but if you look at the lighting you'll see that part actually looks good. So what happened here? Why the blacks and the noise? A simple two reasons. The first is we can't normalize black. The color vector of black has a magnitude of 0, there's no way of normalizing that to a magnitude of 1. This explains the large areas of black. The noise, I think, is because if we try to normalize very dark colors, we get some precision problems and that causes the noise, but I'm not sure about that. However, the fix to that problem was adding something to the light's vector before normalizing. The number has to be large enough to get rid of the noise and small enough to not squeeze the saturation out of the light. Plus 0.05 worked nice for me on Windows and even on Android without increasing the precision. Now this looks good to me. The light colors look nice still, and the black areas and the noise are gone. The strength slider changes the light strength when drawn to the light surface. We can also change the sprites in this demo. And especially with this sprite, I like the bluish green light in the lower right corner. Now there might just be one little detail that bothers depending on your art style. Black stays black and you might not want that. So I came up with a rather quick and dirty solution. If we add a small amount of light call to the out call, the light surface will brighten up the out call. Now the darks aren't quite as dark anymore, but we lose some saturation and some contrast. Personally, I like both styles, just use this shader with or without that line, whatever you prefer. Now to finish, I'd like to repeat the introduction, but now by showing the images and the code. Step 1, take the sample from the application surface where the game is on, that's the base color. Step 2, calculate the day and night cycle color without the lights, the out color. Step 3, take a sample from the light surface, the lights color. Step 4, multiply the base color with the normalized lights color and the lights factor. Step 5, calculate the lights color value. Step 6, mix the out color with the light and base color. The mix amount is the value of the lights color. So the brighter the light sample is, the more of the base color times the lights color will show, and the darker the lights value is, the more of the out color will show. And this is the final result. So that's it for this video. I hope it helps you setting up a lighting system in your game using the Stay Night Shader. Next time I hope to continue with some distortions. If you followed me on Twitter recently you might have noticed my experiments with that the last couple of weeks. There's still some stuff I'd like to try before creating more videos on that topic though. So until next time.